Welcome back to Airport Operations. Now, we were just speaking earlier about the types of airports and runways. As a pilot, I fly my aircraft into this airport and I could land on any runway. What about all the other pilots? Everybody's going to land on any runway they want to and as you can imagine, it might get a little bit chaotic pretty quickly. Well, in order to alleviate that chaos, airport operations use what we call traffic patterns. Now, traffic patterns are a rectangular shape around the runway. Notice this rectangular shape shows the aircraft flying making left hand turns. Left hand turns in a traffic pattern are considered standard. However, some runways may have right hand turns around the runway. That's a non-standard traffic pattern. When we get to a tower controlled airport, the tower controller may have pilots fly a left hand traffic pattern or a right hand traffic pattern based on what the tower controller is uh, requiring the pilot to do. Now, we make further sense out of these traffic patterns by naming the legs. It's a common misconception to look at a rectangle, transfer that to a traffic pattern and say, hey, there's four legs in a traffic pattern. In fact, there are six legs in a standard traffic pattern. Take a look at this runway right here. The aircraft that is taking off is just rotating and leaving the tarmac as it climbs up it's on the first leg of the pattern. We call that the departure leg. The departure leg of the traffic pattern ends either one half mile past the end of the runway or 300 feet below traffic pattern altitude. At that point, the aircraft is on what we call the upwind leg. From the upwind leg, the aircraft will make a left turn if it's a standard traffic pattern that left turn will put the aircraft on the crosswind leg. That's the third leg. From the crosswind leg, the pilot will turn left again, and now we'll have the wind behind her or him on the downwind leg of the traffic pattern. As they make their next left turn, they are once again crosswind, but we already have a leg named crosswind. If we name this leg crosswind, it'll be very confusing. This leg is called the base leg, and it's the base for my turn to the sixth leg, which is the final approach leg of the traffic pattern. Final approach takes me back to the runway. Those are the six legs of a standard traffic pattern. Now, assuming that all pilots are using standard traffic pattern flows in order to promote safety and see where uh, each other are in the area around the airport, one question comes up, well, if I'm flying to the airport, how do I enter this traffic pattern? Well, there's two main ways to enter. Take a look at this first diagram. In this diagram, we're flying over the top of the runway perpendicular to that airport, to that uh, runway, and we're making a 270 degree turn to the right to come around to what we call a left hand downwind leg. Now, if we just go barreling over the top of this airport at traffic pattern altitude, we might be in conflict with other traffic. Look carefully at the diagram. We're flying over the top of the runway 500 feet higher than the traffic pattern altitude. We're going to go out past the traffic pattern, make our right 270, and descend before we get to that left downwind leg. Never descend 
into a traffic pattern. This is setting up a very hazardous situation because low wing aircraft have a blind spot looking down. High wing aircraft have a blind spot looking up. So you can imagine where these blind spots overlap could potentially be hazardous. So we always enter a pattern at pattern altitude. The next way to make a standard entry to a traffic pattern is, again, flying over the top of the runway and making a left turn directly on to the left downwind leg. This pattern entry would be used if we know that we're the only ones in the traffic pattern. There are no other aircraft around. We're going to go over the runway and a left turn on to downwind. These are the standard pattern entries at non-control tower or what we call uncontrolled airports. So let's think back about this whole upwind, downwind, crosswind. Now, wait a second. Why are pilots using these terms? Because when we fly airplanes, we land and take off into the wind. Hmm, I wonder why we do that. Well, think about it. If I land and take off into the wind, I'm using less runway because the wind slows my ground speed. Now, work with your flight instructor and don't confuse your indicated airspeed with your ground speed. These are two different speeds. The aircraft sees the same airspeed, but it sees a different ground speed with a headwind. The ground speed will be slower. With a tailwind, that ground speed will be faster. Well, that brings up another important point about airport operations. What about the direction of the wind? How do I know? Well, remember earlier we talked about the ATIS. Um, the wind direction and speed will be on the ATIS. Uh, it'll also be shown on wind, directors, wind uh, direction indicators on the ground. Now, if you take a look at this diagram, this shows three of the most common wind direction indicators. You see a wind sock, you see a tetrahedron, and you see what we call a wind T. So if you take a careful look, a sock is open on one end, smaller on the other end, and the sock will trail downwind as the wind blows into it. All right, take a close up look at this tetrahedron. I know that's a big word, it's a geometrical shape, but the tetrahedron is like a couple of triangles built together, like you can see here, and the small end of that triangle points into the wind. Okay? Now, the third one is the wind T. The wind T is exactly what it says. It's the letter T, but if you look on the bottom of the T, there's a little rudder there. It looks like a wind vane. That's what it is. And the trailing end of the T will trail downwind. All right. Those are the three most common wind indicators. Well, what if I'm going to an uncontrolled airport and I know, well, I want to land into the wind. Why? The ground speed will be slower and I'll use less concrete. Remember, my indicated airspeed will be the same. But what would be the traffic pattern direction? Well, let's take a look at this diagram. Now, you can see from this tetrahedron and this windsock that the wind is coming from this direction. Now, you see these little white markers on the four sides? Each of these white markers is indicating one end of a runway. So this horizontal runway, let's call this the east-west runway, has a large white marker and then a small little white marker. Here's how you think of it. The small side of that little white L is the base leg. 
the large portion of that white L is final approach. And imagine your airplane flying over that little white leg and turning on to the large white leg. You're going from base to final. You're making a left turn. Well, here's a few review questions for this segment of the lesson. The first thing we'd like you to do is take a piece of scrap paper and a pen or a pencil and draw a standard traffic pattern. Draw the standard direction and draw all the legs. Now, I'm not going to tell you how many legs there are. You have to draw all the legs in the standard direction. All right, number two, where would you locate information about non-standard traffic patterns? Remember our sources of information? Which source might you use? Okay, number three. Take a look at these three wind indicators. Can you tell from these diagrams the direction of the wind for each of them?